Hey, hello. Uh, welcome to the WP WebKit graphics report for 2021. Uh, in this presentation, uh, we'll go over the WP related graphics work that Egalia has been undertaking this year uh, and what we plan to complete by the end of the year. And uh, this will be roughly broken down into key areas of uh, features, performance, and architecture uh, with a brief word on uh, future post 2021 plans towards the end. So features. Uh, work in this section is mainly about enabling new web features. Uh, of course, there's some intersection with architecture work. Um, though we've worked on these features with WP in mind, uh, many of them apply more widely, most of them in fact, uh, either to GTK or to uh, all platforms. So first, uh, off-screen canvas. Uh, off-screen canvas, for those that aren't aware, uh, is an API that allows you to use canvas in worker threads, uh, either headlessly or asynchronously outputting to a DOM canvas element. Uh, you can imagine that being used, uh, for example, for an efficient map Im implementation that doesn't block uh, the user, the main thread. Um, similarly, any kind of multi-threaded rendering that you don't want to block user interaction uh, off-screen canvas can help with. Uh, we've been working on this since late 2019, uh, with all work being directly submitted upstream. Uh, the bulk of the work has been enabling parts of the canvas pipeline to work off the main thread. Uh, colors and fonts have been especially challenging, uh, as both require a subset of CSS parsing, and there's no provision for loading and caching fonts at all off of the main thread. Um, and there are now paths in the CSS parsing code that let you pass colors and fonts without having to take uh, the full CSS parsing path, uh, which remains unsafe to use off of the main thread. Uh, fonts have been made safe to use by removing singleton use uh, along the off-screen canvas font path and having separate font caches for workers. So each worker uh, has its own font cache that's created on demand. Um, custom font loading in workers calls back to the main thread to perform loading using Threadable Loader, uh, much like worker script uh, loading does. Uh, so this project recently reached a near complete state uh, with recent commits enabling practically all of uh, the off-screen canvas related features. Uh, it's expected that there, I mean, there will probably be bugs and compatibility issues left to find and solve, uh, but the bulk of the work is now done. There's likely to be a long tail of minor feature work and optimization, so this will become low priority, uh, a low priority ongoing task after the first half of this year. Uh, this is enabled by default for both WP and GTK builds. Um, other platforms might work, but they're currently untested. So WebXR uh, is the umbrella term for web technologies that apply to extended reality, uh, such as virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality. Um, this set of technologies enables things like VR helmets and controllers to be fully leveraged within the web browser by web content. Uh, we've been working on this for a while, uh, but have recently made pretty huge strides and have managed to reach a near complete state upstream, though the relevant specifications are still evolving. Uh, we believe that the technology really needs to be on a standalone device to truly exploit its potential. However, uh, so, well not however, but we'll be pursuing this path, uh, likely on the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, this will rely uh, on WP working on Android, of course. Um, we plan to continue this implementation following the evolution uh, of the standards and writing demo content in the second half of 2021. Uh, links are on the slide, of course, if you want to look at uh, the standards or follow along the tracking bugs in uh, the WebKit Bugzilla. So SVG2, uh, this is a backwards compatible extension to SVG 1.1 that's designed to allow SVG to integrate more seamlessly with web content and technologies. Uh, to realize this, we're working on unifying the rendering paths between SVG and HTML, which are currently separate. Uh, this will provide hardware acceleration for SVG, uh, in particular, hardware accelerated transforms and animations, both in 2D and 3D, much like we already have for HTML content. Uh, and it opens up SVG for serious use on embedded platforms and in other resource constrained situations.
Uh, we've got a complete prototype at the moment with no SVG test regressions and only a small handful of regressions outside of SVG. Uh, we're hoping to address these issues and submit a patch for this upstream soon uh, with a completion target of the second half of the year. So on to performance work. Uh, in this section I'll cover work mainly focused around improving performance, uh, especially uh, on embedded devices. So scrolling. Uh, this has been an ongoing project over the last year or so, uh, with a lot of the work already upstream and further work in progress. The aim is to improve the interactive performance uh, when scrolling pages, especially on resource constrained devices. Now, we've already completed a lot of the work uh, that unifies scrolling uh, behavior between GTK and WPE ports, as well as improving touchpad support in WPE, fixing issues with uh, the asynchronous compositor related to overflow scrolling and generally improve, improving perceived scroll animation performance. Um, the target for this is the first half of this year, uh, so wrapping up soon, but it's likely work will be ongoing. Specifically, we'd like to bring the WPE and GTK scrolling paths closer to the Mac implementation to reduce the chance of regressions. So uh, the, this is a big one. Uh, we've been working on overhauling the rendering of the WP backend for quite a while now uh, to better take advantage of hardware accelerated rendering on embedded devices. So this new graphics pipeline takes the form of a replacement of our current Cairo and GL uh, backed rendering uh, and compositing pipeline with a fully accelerated pipeline that has GLES2 as a minimum requirement. Uh, this is a change from the current software rasterization and hardware compositing dichotomy to an architecture that would allow full hardware rendering, uh, that's including vector graphics and text. Uh, this is still in the proof of concept stage, but is it being actively worked on with a high priority. Uh, the aim for the first half of the year is to have a prototype working so we can evaluate, evaluate whether our work is viable. Assuming it is, uh, which we think it will be, <laughs> this will be an ongoing project. So COG, uh, for those that haven't, uh, that maybe uh, aren't uh, that familiar with WP or haven't uh, sort of experimented, experimented much outside of the WebKit tree, uh, it's a basic browser that uses WebKit WPE for rendering uh, and uses backend plugins to work on various different platform configurations, such as with a, a Wayland compositor or directly on a raw frame buffer. Um, so this is a project to add shared memory support uh, to the backend or to, to a backend. So adding a shared memory backend uh, would enable software rendering and remove the current GLES requirement or EGL requirement. Um, this would expand our reach to devices that only have very basic output capabilities. Uh, and it would also allow COG to render headlessly into system memory. Um, upstream WebKit work for this is complete, but working COG itself is still ongoing for this. So EGL stream support. Uh, EGL stream is an API that allows zero copy sharing of EGL buffers between different contexts and processes. Uh, it's essentially an alternative to the more generic DMA buff interface on Linux or surface texture on Android or texture from PixMap on X11 and so on, uh, with some facility also to help with audio synchronization. Uh, it's also currently only supported on NVIDIA hardware. Uh, and COG support for it, I think, would mainly be for optimizing video streaming. Uh, the target for this was the first half of the, of the year, but this is still uh, waiting on other COG features to be completed. So currently COG only has support for one output target. Uh, so if you open a new window or do it via JavaScript or, or whatever, uh, that doesn't work <laughs> at the moment. Uh, but this project adds support for multiple targets and it enables web APIs uh, that require multiple windows. So href targets will start to work. Uh, parts of the DOM window API uh, that involve opening new windows will actually work. Um, a, proof of, a proof of concept uh, is available in a branch that's linked on the slide uh, and completion is targeted for the first half of the year. So architecture. 
Uh, in this section, I'll cover architectural work that may not have an immediate user visible benefit, but will enable user visible improvements and features going forward. So the GPU process enables rendering of content outside of the main thread. Uh, while you can build with this enabled and WP and GTK ports already, the functionality isn't actually implemented right now, it's just stopped. Uh, we plan to look at this in the second half of the year, but work has not yet started. Uh, Angle is a library that abstracts various versions of OpenGL and provides implementations on various other APIs, such as Direct3D, Vulkan, Metal, and also on OpenGL itself. Um, an advantage of using Angle is that it abstracts and implements the necessary security features of WebGL, um, as well as optimizing certain GL behavior. So if you call directly uh, into your GL driver, you're kind of at the mercy of, uh, the, of the driver itself. And um, perhaps say if it doesn't have any uh, context caching or anything like that, um, you can end up hitting slow paths kind of thing that Angle can work around by having its own kind of uh, abstracted implementation of OpenGL. So switching to Angle would give us effortless WebGL2 support because Angle already supports WebGL2 uh, as a target context. Uh, and, and it would improve our security, performance, and consistency of behavior. Uh, this is on the roadmap for the second half of the year, but work hasn't commenced yet. Uh, Angle is already used uh, and has been used for a long time in Chrome. So future work. Uh, finally, I'll just briefly talk about some of the preliminary plans that we have for 2022 uh, and beyond. Uh, these are things that we've discussed and they're on our radar, but are not yet scheduled. So Vulkan support. Uh, Vulkan is a low level uh, graphics API, like, uh, well, lower level than OpenGL, but like uh, OpenGL, uh, like Metal on Mac or like D3D12 on Windows. Uh, the hope that would, uh, would be that by targeting it, we can make improvements with regards to memory usage and draw call efficiency. Uh, the feasibility and priority of this is greatly affected by uh, our other areas of work, such as the new graphics pipeline. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. So WebGPU, uh, this is a this is feature work. Uh, WebGPU is an uh, evolving standard that aims to provide a low-level graphics API like Vulkan or Metal to the web. This is already supported in Firefox and Chromium uh, and supported by a WebKit in the Apple ports. Um, so it would be good to support it in the, the GTK and WP backends also. Uh, Skia, so Skia is a 2D vector rendering engine similar to Cairo, which is what we use currently. Uh, initial conversations have happened around the idea of replacing our current usage of Cairo with Skia. Uh, this may be superseded by the new graphics pipeline. Uh, we don't just don't have any solid plans around this right now, but we have uh, talked about it and done some sort of very preliminary investigation. Uh, it's likely that replacing Cairo with Skia would provide performance benefits, as Cairo is largely unmaintained at this point and has been for a long time. Okay, and uh, well, as I said, it's basically in the title, parallel image decoders. Uh, this would allow us to take advantage of multi-core CPUs when decoding images. Uh, so that's what we've been up to, uh, and that's what we're going to be up to, more or less, for a while. Uh, if you'd like to keep up with our progress, we have a blog aggregator at planet.agalia.com, and of course you can see our work upstream in the WebKit Git repository. Thanks for listening.